The first step of the painting process is to add what I call the chipping layer, where I simply apply some red and black primer, creating this random noisy texture that will be visible once I start scratching the next layers. To make my life easier on the painting process and help me with the cheap acrylics I use, I also applied a white spray can coat on the model to give me a nice bright base color. Now, unfortunately, it is way too shiny, meaning the adhesion of the next layers could be problematic, but I know exactly how to fix this. I began by setting up my work table and putting each piece on a stick, and then I went for the white base. The idea is pretty simple, I use an abrasive sponge to lightly scratch the white coat, creating more surface area for the acrylic to grab on. Now on this model I wasn't 100% sure on the color scheme, I just knew I wanted some neutral colors, no camo or anything crazy, so I went with a warm white base. You can never go wrong with a warm white and also it goes super well with the retro sci-fi look of the truck. Oh and by the way, just in case you're wondering, my airbrush is a single action Pash H. The white spray coat is a trick that I just recently started doing and it made for a very easy first layer. If I were to put it on the top of the chipping layer, I'd have much more trouble having to put down dozens of layers in order to cover what was there before. So yeah, you should try that if you work with some cheap acrylics like I do. Now from there I decided to add some panels in different shades of white to start giving this truck a beat up look. As I said before, the idea is that this unit is a self-driving science truck that goes from settlement to settlement, meaning it probably goes through some heavy use so it cannot look brand new. The different shades of the base color will break the monotony and read as heavy use. To make those panels, I'm making some quick rectangular masks, not worrying too much about perfection, but rather where to put those panels, like trying to create some even distribution or thinking of the panels that could be replaced from the use of the truck. The effect is very subtle, but it is there, and you'll be able to see how much that adds to the model later on the video. I made two extra shades, both from the original warm white color. One is much brighter and less saturated, like a super light grey, and the second extra shade was just a slightly brighter shade of the first one. With the base corals applied to the pieces, it is time to start scratching them, and I use anything I can to make that damage. Sharp tools, exacto knives, abrasive sponges, and even my fingernails. The idea is pretty simple, to scratch the acrylic coat revealing the chipping layer. I even at this point would make some fake panel lines, using a piece of tape to guide the precision knife and create a straight cut on the painting that looks like a panel. After all of that scratching, I usually go for a quick wash, if the piece is looking ready for that of course. I grab a super washed down acrylic burnt color and I apply it on the cracks and details of the piece, especially the panel lines I just made. Then I clean it as best as I can and repeat this process as many times as needed, till I reach the desired beat up look. That same process had to be repeated to every piece, and as you can see, I like to start from the smaller structures, like the pathfinder I just did, and then the terrain analysis sensor. That way, if something goes terribly wrong with the paint, like some bad reaction, I can just redo that single piece instead of messing up the bigger shapes, like the body or something like that. 
In the scratching process, I also like to use some alcohol, as it kind of helps breaking the acrylic paint, especially if it was like recently painted. Be careful though not to go through all of the layers, including the chipping one. Sometimes you can even reach the plastic depending on how hard you go. A quick trick to not worry too much about this, multiple coats of primer during the build phase. Like imagine reaching a bright plastic color that has nothing to do with the model color scheme, that would be terrible. So I just go heavy on primer. And when I'm ready, I go for the big pieces, in this case, the body of the truck. A quick trick I did in this project is to use some laser cut acrylic shapes that I'm sure are perfectly square. It'll guide me when making my fake panel lines. I just put them on the top of the model and compare them to the lines I have and make sure my panels are perfectly aligned and perpendicular to each other. Now this process is very long but also a lot of fun and I very much prefer the weathering over the airbrushing part, that's for sure. If you like this type of video where I'll go over in detail sharing my techniques and the challenges of each project, please subscribe and click the like button, that helps a ton. If you wanna go one step further and show some love for the content, consider becoming a patron or a member, just like these amazing people did and join an exclusive model making community. Links are of course below. And here's another great tool to create some interesting panel lines, a simple compass, with a sharp thing on both ends of course. The circular quantum computer shape on the back seemed like it needed some round panels, so I made a tiny one just to make things fun and kinda break the symmetry, which is almost a mantra right here on this channel. You just gotta be gentle and go slow to make sure that the lines end up perfectly round. Yeah, I love these kinds of trick and I hope you do too. Now from there I repeated the tricks I just showed you guys with the masking tape, the acrylic shapes and the compass, and as you can see, on some spots I put a line right at the edge of the different shade to increase the illusion that these are some replaced panels on the truck. I'm also adding a bunch of random scratches on the surface of the model and not only near the lines I just made. This is also important so you get a truly chaotic look and not just a repetition of scratch patterns. One extra thing you can do with a compass is to use it to create some parallel lines if you have something to lean it against like I did on the truck, also a very helpful trick. In this case, I'm doing that to make some guidelines and mask the top half of the truck. I want it to have its belly in dark grey. Now luckily I had no trouble covering the warm white with the dark color and there was also no leaks on the masking tape. The belly of the truck also went through the same processes of the top, where I made some fake panel lines, exposing the warm white underneath and then the chipping layer. I also used a compass here and there, not that this is going to be super visible anyways, but I know it's there and I'm happy about it. Then I did a bunch of extra scratches on the surfaces that were more exposed, like the sides and of course the front of the truck. This is where the weathering has to make sense and look believable. It is very important to pay attention to these things if you want to end up with a realistic looking model. The body then went through the wash process and it was ready to go to the next phase. Now this is all for the next episode of the series where I'll show the entire build process of the truck so stay tuned for that and as always thanks for watching.